Okay, so welcome to this video. In this video, what we're going to discuss is the Mammalian Circadian Timing System. Okay, uh, so the structure then for this video, what we're going to start with is a discussion of the circadian clock. Okay, then what we'll discuss is the master clock and how the master clock is entrained to the light dark cycles that are around us. Okay, right. So uh, we'll begin with what is a circadian clock, first of all. So a circadian clock is a clock that uh, cycles on a 24 hour period. Okay, so more generally, a circadian process is something which cycles uh, with a period of 24 hours. So, for instance, the light dark cycle is a circadian process because um, it repeats itself every 24 hours. So, for instance, we could draw a little graph of this. Okay, um, so if we put on the y axis uh, the level of light, okay. And on the x-axis, we have time. Uh, then if we have every 24 hours, so if we have 0, 24, and then 48, what we'll find is that, for instance, at 0 hours, of course, it's very dark, so the light is somewhere down here. And then it will go up during the day, and then it will come back down. Whoops, miss overshot a little bit. Never mind, I'll have to make it a little steeper. Uh, then it will repeat itself the next day, like so. Okay, so it has a circadian rhythm. Okay, it, it repeats itself every 24 hours. So a circadian process is just anything which is a cycle and repeats itself every 24 hours. Okay, so 24 hours is the magical number. So this is the light dark cycle. This is the most obvious example of a circadian process. Now, here is the uh, amazing mind blowing result of the entire video. Every cell in your body has a heartbeat, okay? And it has a heartbeat that, uh, well, it beats every 24 hours, okay? So it has a process which oscillates, okay? And this is a protein, basically. There is a protein whose level in the cell, well, there's more than one protein, in fact. There are proteins within the cell where their levels oscillate just like this on a 24-hour basis, okay? Um, and this is occurring in every cell of your body. So every cell of your body effectively has a little timekeeping mechanism, okay? Whereby it knows whether it is day or night, okay? So the protein will go up during day, and then will go down during night, up during day, down during night. So. Every cell has what's known as a circadian clock, and this is what's meant by the mammalian circadian timing system, that within every mammalian cell there is this uh, set of proteins whose levels oscillate on a 24-hour uh, time scale, okay? And these form what's known as the circadian clock within cells. Okay, so we're going to start then by discussing the components of this circadian clock, uh, and then we're going to discuss the mechanisms by which the circadian clock actually works. So we'll start off with the proteins which actually do oscillate, just like this light-dark cycle that we have going in 24 hours. Okay, so once again, on the x-axis we will plot time. Here is 0 hours, here is 24 hours, here is 48 hours, and then what comes after that? Add 24 onto that, 60, 72. Okay, right. Uh, so what will happen is, on now on the y-axis, we'll have the protein level. Okay, and I'll tell you the names of these proteins in a moment. Okay, and these proteins will go up during daytime, and then they'll crash back down towards nighttime, and then they'll repeat this process all over again, like so. 
okay? So you've got this heartbeat-like event that happens every 24 hours, okay? Uh, and it's the mechanism by which cells know what time of day it is. So each cell has this intrinsic internal clock, okay? And this is known as the circadian timing system within mammalian cells. Right, uh, and it's not just mammalian cells that have this, more um, other forms of life also have this. Okay, we're not going to discuss those because it, it's different. The, uh, the mechanism by which the um, clockwork is maintained in other forms of life is different from how it's maintained in the mammalian cell. So we're going to discuss exclusively what happens in the mammalian cell. Okay, so, what are these two proteins then that oscillate on this 24-hour period like so? Well, there's two of them, okay, and each of them has two isoforms. So there's two types of proteins. One is known as the period protein, and the other is called the cryptochrome protein. So two proteins, both of which oscillate within the cytoplasm of cells, and they oscillate like so. So they go up during the daytime and down during nighttime, up during daytime, down during nighttime, up during daytime. Okay, now for each of these two proteins, there are actually uh, two forms. So for period, you have period 1, which is just abbreviated to per 1, and then there's also per 2, period 2. Okay, so these two proteins, both of them do this basically. Their levels go up during the day and down during night. And it's the similar for cryptochrome. There are two again. There's cryptochrome 1 and cryptochrome proteins are usually abbreviated to CRY proteins. And then there's also cryptochrome 2 proteins. Okay, and again, their levels will go up during daytime, down during nighttime, up during daytime, down during nighttime. Okay, so we now want to discuss the mechanism by which this actually occurs. How do the levels of these two proteins go up during daytime and down during nighttime in this circadian manner? Well, basically, it's what is known as a transcriptional translational feedback loop. Okay, so basically, what you're going to do is you produce these proteins through transcription and then translation. And then the production of the protein feeds back on uh, the mechanisms which are producing it, okay, and stops further production of the protein, okay. So what's going to happen is you're going to make these proteins, period 1, period 2, cryptochrome 1 and cryptochrome 2, and as their levels rise, they will inhibit their own production, basically. That's why it's called a feedback loop. Uh, and then, of course, once you stop them producing them, their levels will go down, and then when their levels go down, that will mean that they no longer inhibit their own production, so the production of them starts again. Okay, and transcriptional translational feedback loops, for short, are abbreviated to TTFLs. Um, okay, so T for transcriptional, T for translational, and then F for feedback, and L for loop. Okay, right, so let's see this transcriptional translational feedback loop then. So basically, we go, it's a cycle, so there is no beginning, but we will start at zero o'clock where you have no period and no cryptochrome proteins, or very low period and very low cryptochrome proteins. Okay, so how do you produce more uh, period and cryptochrome proteins? Well, basically, you need to activate uh, the expression of the genes for these period proteins and these cryptochrome proteins. And to do that, you need a transcription factor, basically. Okay, and my pen is running out, so I'm going to call it there for this video and continue this discussion in the next video once I've got a new pen.